Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Vile. Welcome to my YouTube channel for A-Level Chemistry. The purpose of this channel is all about getting you ready for your A-Level Chemistry exams. And this video specifically is going to focus in on HESS cycles and we're going to be looking at enthalpy of formation HESS cycles. If you find this video helpful, please like it, please subscribe, please share it with your friends. Okay, before we get into actual HESS cycles and what they are, it's important that we understand what we mean by enthalpy of formation. So if, for instance, you take the compound water, H2O, if you were to form one mole of water from its elements, you'd form it from hydrogen, gas, and oxygen, gas, and they would combine together to form water, which is a liquid. Now, enthalpy of formation is one mole of the substance being formed from its elements. So you would have to have half a mole of oxygen to give one mole of water. So you can't balance that any other way. Does that make sense what we mean by enthalpy of formation? You're forming one mole of the elements from their sorry, one mole of the compound from its elements in their standard states under standard conditions. So if I were to give you another one just to show you, uh, say you had C2H5OH, which is ethanol, and ethanol is a liquid. To make ethanol from its element, you would firstly need carbon. Now carbon exists on its own, it's a solid you'd need hydrogen, H2, which is a gas, and you'd need three lots of hydrogen to give you the six over here. And then you've got one oxygen here, so you'd need half a mole of oxygen gas. So that would be the enthalpy of formation of ethanol. So it's always the formation of one mole of the substance from its elements in their standard states. Yeah? And the good news about this is that all of these values, for instance, the enthalpy of formation of water, the enthalpy of formation of ethanol, are available in books of data, so you can look them up, and therefore you can use this information to solve problems. So for instance, if you have a reaction where, let's just say, A goes to B, and for some reason, whatever it might be, you can't measure the enthalpy change of A turning into B, but you can look up the enthalpy of formation of A and you can look up the enthalpy of formation of B. So you'd have the elements in their standard states. And then because it's enthalpy of formation, you'd have the arrow going from the elements to A and then from the elements to B. So this would be what we call an enthalpy of formation Hess cycle. So if, for instance, you wanted to work out, let's call this arrow one, but you couldn't work it out directly, then what you'd do is you'd look up what arrow two is, and you'd look up what arrow three is, because you can find it from this sort of data here, from these equations, which you can look up or they'll be given to you on the exam paper. And therefore, if you want to measure arrow one, you can work it out by knowing what arrows two and three are. And the golden rule here is if you go against an arrow, you subtract it. And if you go with an arrow, you add it. So we could say that arrow one is equal to minus arrow two plus arrow three, which for me is a bit clunky. I'd rather say that arrow one equals three minus two. It's easier to write it out that way. Okay, so if you go against an arrow, you're subtracting it, and if you're going with an arrow, you're plusing it. So another way of saying this is you could say that delta H for the reaction that you're trying to work out is equal to, well, it would be, if it's 3 minus 2, it will be products minus reactants. So you work out what the products are, the enthalpy of formation of the products, and then you subtract away the reactants. Does that make sense before we start looking at a, like solving problems with it? So here you've got an example. 
You've got it on the screen, but you've also got it on the sheets as well. You've got two lots of sodium hydrogen carbonate decomposing to sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide and water. First thing first, you need a balanced equation for this to work, but that's already been balanced for you. And then what you've got in the data is the delta HF values for each of these substances. So if you just remember to what we, what we said on the previous slide, delta H for the reaction is equal to products P minus reactants. One common question that people ask at this stage is, how do I know if this is an enthalpy of formation question or an enthalpy of combustion question? Because remember, there's the two types of Hess cycles. Well, you look at the data that you're supplied with. And if you look here, it tells you it is delta HF in the data. That means it's an enthalpy of formation Hess cycle. So your arrows are going up. OK, so. Bear in mind, you can have a combustion reaction where you're given delta HF data, but you always go to the data that you've been supplied, and that will tell you what type of Hess cycle it is. OK, so we know because it's a formation Hess cycle, it's products minus reactants. So then what we do is we add all of the enthalpy of formation of the products together. So that's going to be the sodium carbonate, which is minus one one. 30.7 plus the carbon dioxide which is minus 393.5 and then we'll add that to the water which is minus 285.8 so all of that is your products and then we're going to minus the reactants which is two lots of, because look at the balanced equation, there's a two in front of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. Two lots of minus 950.8. So when you plug that all into the calculator, that comes out as plus 91. 0.6 kilojoules per mole, which tells you it's endothermic. And actually, if you look at the equation that's taken place, it, it makes sense for it to be endothermic because what this is is a thermal decomposition reaction. So you're heating it up to get it to decompose. So the only thing you're doing here is heating the sodium hydrogen carbonate until it decomposes. So it makes sense that it's endothermic. Yeah, so because it's enthalpy of formation, delta HF values, we know it's going to be products minus reactants. And if you can't remember that, draw it out the Hess cycle and work it out, but it's perfectly acceptable to remember it as products minus reactants. So the product, well, there's only one product, and it's minus 109. And then you're subtracting the reactants, which is the C2H4, which is 52.2. Plus the HCl, which is minus 92.3. And if you check all that into your calculator, you should get minus 68.9 kilojoules per mole, which is exothermic. OK. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like it, please subscribe to the channel and keep checking back for more A-Level Chemistry videos as this site will be updated regularly. Thanks everyone.